Hello, my name is Safa Shawan Edwards, and I am the Deputy Director of the Atlantic Council's Cyber State Craft Initiative within the Scowcroft Center for Strategy and Security. Thank you so much for joining us today for today's discussion, Security Through Cooperation, a new phase of US-EU cyber collaboration. Cybersecurity threats remind us again and again that there is only one internet and one cyberspace connecting individuals, enterprises, and nations all over the world, necessitating international cybersecurity solutions and cooperation. Political and military alliances like the European Union and NATO provide an existing framework and mechanisms for collaboration between nations on cybersecurity challenges, giving democratic governments a strategic advantage. This year, the European Union will establish a new cybersecurity, industrial technology, and research competence center in Bucharest. The center will support research coordination across the EU and also pool investments for cybersecurity research and development. The establishment of the center also comes at an important time when the Biden-Harris administration is actively working to re-engage European allies and partners. Today, we'll be exploring what this new EU cyber center means for US-European cooperation in cyberspace, as well as within the context of the Transatlantic Alliance. We're joined by an esteemed panel of experts for a discussion moderated by Dr. Kenneth Gears, Senior Fellow with the Atlantic Council's Cyber Statecraft Initiative, Analyst at Very Good Security, and ambassador at for NATO CCD COE. We are also joined by Bogdan Catalin Galbere, Adjunct Secretary General of the Government of Romania, Dan Campeyan, Director for CERT Romania, Liliana Musetan, Program Manager of the IT Security Risk Management Program at the EU Commission, and Marco Barros Lorenco, Team Leader for Research and Innovation at the EU Agency for Cybersecurity. Before we turn to our panel, we'll hear from a special guest for some opening remarks. Michelle Markov is the Acting Coordinator for Cyber Issues at the U.S. State Department. In this role, Michelle coordinates U.S. policy on the spectrum of cyber-related issues across the State Department and develops diplomatic strategies to encourage states to join the U.S. in taking steps to protect their critical networks and to cooperate internationally to enhance and preserve global cyber stability. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today, and over to you. Thank you so much, Safa, for that lovely introduction and hello to everybody. It's a true pleasure to join you all. And I'm so glad to be able to share this virtual stage today with such a distinguished panel of public servants and other experts. The focus of this event, uh, increased US-EU cyber collaboration is very exciting. Momentum is growing every day between us and as we deepen international cooperation on cyber policy, we enhance the security, safety, stability of cyberspace for all. Uh, I'm very happy to offer my congratulations to Romania on the establishment of the European Cybersecurity Industrial Technical and Research Com Competence Center. Romania has been a bold and brave voice in the advancement of international cyber policy. Cyber and digital affairs has been a pillar of our decade-long bilateral strategic relationship, and Romania has been a steadfast partner in, dis in disrupting malign networks. So Romania is an excellent choice for the center's placement, and I'm glad to see that Romania's hard work in supporting responsible state behavior in cyberspace is being recognized this way. I would like to briefly address the important role diplomacy and international cooperation play in defending a stable, reliable, interoperable internet for everyone across the globe. Just last week, we heard President Biden tell the Munich Security Conference that we must shape the rules that will govern the advance of technologies and the norms of behavior in cyberspace so that they are used to lift people up and not to pin them down. How to accomplish what President Biden laid out is the work we're doing now, work will, that will take on an increased prominence in the years to come and require continued close transatlantic coordination. When it comes to cyber issues, I can't overstate the importance of building our cooperative efforts on a firm foundation 
of international cyber policy, including a widely accepted understanding of what constitutes responsible state behavior mm -hmm. in cyberspace and shared approaches to hold states accountable when they do not act responsibly. For over a decade, we've worked with the international community to design and promote a framework for responsible state behavior in cyberspace with, I think, tremendous success. Romania has played an important role in this work as a member of the current UN group of governmental experts, uh, what we call the UNGGE. The framework that we are advancing together has three elements. First of all, it affirms that existing international law applies to state behavior in cyberspace. Second, it calls on all states to adhere to certain voluntary norms of behavior in cyberspace during peacetime. And third, it calls for the development and implementation of practical confidence building measures to reduce the risk of conflict in cyberspace. Together, the elements of this framework are intended to build trust, to enhance transparency, and decrease the risk of conflict. And these together provide a strong foundation for US-EU cyber cooperation going forward. I know that the organizations here understand this. Romania, as a steadfast pillar in the UN, GGE, and the EU, shares our priority of boosting cyber diplomacy, enhancing cyber resilience, and reinforcing cyber defenses. But we know that even a strong framework based on voluntary norms and international law cannot enforce itself. Recent events demonstrate that besides our work to enhance network defense and build a common understanding of this framework, we must also work together to create clear, transparent, and meaningful consequences for malicious actors in cyberspace. In 2019, the United States, Romania, and 26 other nations signed a joint statement affirming their willingness to work together to hold states accountable for their bad actions in cyberspace. As that statement put it, there must be consequences for bad behavior in cyberspace. And the State Department is working to ensure that a broad group of countries stand willing and able to impose those consequences as necessary. Romania and the EU are among those joining together with the United States to call out specific actions of malign actors. And we particularly applaud the work of the EU on its cyber toolbox and on issuing its first two cyber sanctions. This is a good start and a fruitful area for continued collaborative effort. Research and coordination which is the role of the new Cyber Center of Competence, can help support this overall strategy to maintain an internet that is open, interoperable, reliable, and secure. To do that most effectively, we believe it must support this framework of responsible state behavior in cyberspace and must encourage EU member countries to adopt similar strategies at home. So I thank you for inviting me to share the U.S. perspective and our optimism for transatlantic cooperation on cyber issues. Thank you as well to EU and Romania for your work to advance the framework of responsible state behavior and to work to hold uh, uh, bad actors accountable for malicious cyber activity. I look forward to hearing your perspectives on the path forward for the Cyber Center and US-EU cyber collaboration. 
With that, I will conclude and yield the floor to Dr. Gears, who will moderate the rest of the discussion. Thank you again for having me. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's always a pleasure to get the latest on uh, cyber diplomacy uh, from, from you. Um, I don't want to take up uh, too much time as the, the moderator. I just want to say that you know, I've had an opportunity to work with, you know, with, with NATO, the EU, OSCE, and uh, do some international work myself on cybersecurity, and I've never regretted a second of it. Uh, and so I'm so excited uh, to, uh, to hear uh, from Romania today. Uh, I think, unfortunately, in this era of pandemic, uh, one of the things you know, that we've learned is that international collaboration is so important uh, to defeat um, an international problem, right? An international solution is required uh, to defeat an international problem. And I think that you know, global warming, I think that the pan pandemic and also cybersecurity really are, in fact, um, that kind of an issue that we need to work uh, together. Myself, I'm, I have a, a military background, and so I, I um, have done more work with NATO, but I'm so glad to see uh, the EU rise in prominence so quickly and so clearly uh, and work with uh, NATO on, and the U.S. on, on cybersecurity issues because uh, so much of it uh, is political. Um, and it's even social uh, and in the economic space. Um, I'm super lucky analyst. I, I was in Estonia in 2007 uh, and then in Ukraine in 2014, uh, where I was teaching cybersecurity at university. And, uh, and all my students, uh, they really got it in Kiev, uh, right? There's a, a political element, social, economic, uh, to cybersecurity. And so I just want to uh, end right there and say that I really want to hear from our uh, Romanian uh, panelists about what's happening uh, in Romania and their contributions uh, to uh, the EU-US uh, dialogue, uh, especially via the new center. So, um, so please uh, allow me just to, to, uh, to let the first one speak. So thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. It's a real honor. Does Bogdan want to speak first? Yes, thank you. I will speak first and I will speak the first. First of all, thank you for the remarkable words Michelle said about Romania and the Romanian policy and Romanian acts in this uh, continuous modern fight, the fight against cyber attacks. My name is Bogdan Gelbere. I'm uh, for the moment the Deputy General Secretary of the Government. Uh, the institution called Chat Ro is under the authority of the General Secretary of the Government. And uh, in, the mo in this moment, is in a moment of a transformation into a modern insti institution adapted for our days. In a global society in which digital digitalization became an indis indispensable component of our everyday lives, cyber attacks became unfortunately a daily threat. The Romanian government, who has the digitalization of the society in his government program, is building institutional a new authority, the National Directorate of Cybersecurity, using the structure, the actual structure of Chert Row, represented here in this panel by Mr. Duncan Panel. These things, this process is made using, I don't know the exact word in English for that, emergency ordinance, something which in the, something each that uh, presents the emergency that the government feels for making this transformation of the institute chart role. The general secretary has the honor to, uh, to create this ordinance, being the authority that coordinates chart role. I'm, uh, we are taking advantage of the presence in Bucharest of the European Center for Cybersecurity. And we intend that using this modern new directorate, a modern institution, 
to succeed to collect funds in cooperation with other partners, public or private, Europeans or Euro-Atlantics, nationals, to, uh, to create a modern structure and to use especially the human resources we have in our country. But I can say that I personally thank you for the interest you have manifest and I can assure you for the total cooperation of CETRO, the future directorate, and the general secretary of the government. And I will leave the rest of the technical parts to Mr. Duncan Pano, the manager of the CETRO, the future directorate. Thank you very much. Have my card? Dan, are you ready to speak? Thank I'm, you so I'm much, always... Bogdan. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Gilbert. I would like to thank also very much uh, the Atlantic Council and the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce, of course. You guys, you made it happen. Uh, and uh, to continue a bit uh, what uh, Mr. Um, uh, Gilbert mentioned, um, actually, we all have the reflection what it takes to be a strong partner uh, as a country, but a strong partner that can stand shoulder to shoulder with the United States, the European Union countries, against, of course, common challenges and adversaries that we have in cyberspace, where, as we all know, there are no borders and everything happens so much and so fast. So truly, truly, I, I personally believe it takes, of course, vision, capabilities, real commitment, real involvement, governmental one and private one and academic one, and uh, reflecting a bit about uh, our common obligations to defend uh, our countries, to defend the European Union, to defend our strategic partnerships, uh, it's clear and obvious that much more can be done. Uh, Mr. General Secretary of the Romanian government mentioned that from the side of the Romanian government, uh, there is clear commitment uh, to transform, to create a new stronger, more capable cybersecurity civilian actors. Of course, uh, actors uh, like the planned uh, Romanian National Cybersecurity Directorate that will not be alone. Of course, they will have to cooperate with uh, others, with uh, the business, the academia and so on. And we will all, at least here in Europe, will have to work together with the new European Competence Center uh, that was uh, mentioned uh, at the very beginning. Um, talking about this center, as you all know, first of all, it's a very bold movement, a very bold decision of the European Union. Uh, it's not only, uh, let's say, an institutional a governance decision. It's supported by uh, significant, significant funding, as you all know. We're talking here about tens of billion of bucks uh, invested directly in cybersecurity in research into an entire ecosystem uh, addressed um, at uh, supporting and improving the cybersecurity uh, capabilities, the cybersecurity baseline of the European Union in the very first place. And we all have hope really to, uh, to, to use this, uh, the opportunity of this center located in Bucharest in Romania, because as you all know, uh, we are the country that uh, have the, the, the honor and privilege to host this center, um, simply in order to uh, launch uh, a lot more uh, projects, initiatives, uh, actions aimed on improving cybersecurity in general. Uh, only one single and simple uh, example, uh, both United States and Romania, or let's say European Union also in general, we all want secure, safe 5G networks and technologies. That it's, it's common knowledge, these new technologies are critical for economy, society, defense, and we all want those deployed fast, uh, secured, protected against cyber threats, against high risk suppliers, and against uh, an increasing number of very, very, very complex attacks. Of course, what we need for this uh, to build the capabilities, the, the ecosystem that is able to work together in order to improve uh, this cybersecurity uh, landscape, to defend and to respond faster and stronger to cyber attacks. We need uh, closer cooperation, stronger partnership, 
stronger business partnerships um, where uh, companies that have solid uh, state-of-the-art um, cybersecurity solutions and services team up with governmental bodies, with academia, with local players in order to deploy, to roll out on a large scale their solutions. So we need really to, to work together to create those new cybersecurity structures, capabilities that by design shall be more agile, more fit for the challenges of this century. Obvious, and I will wrap up with this, um, there is commitment from European Union, there is a commitment from uh, Romanian uh, government, uh, because we also invest heavily uh, locally, as you know very well, in uh, the human resource in the very first place. As you may know, uh, we are the, um, the sixth country in the world in terms of number of brains of specialists that uh, we put in the market for the ICT in general, and the, if we expand it a bit, for cybersecurity as well. And uh, definitely this is uh, one direction that we are fully committed to, to continue to invest, to, uh, to, to have more specialists, uh, to allow them to uh, be involved together with the businesses in super nice and interesting projects. And I'm sure we'll hear more about this angle from uh, the European bodies, the European uh, institution speakers in the call. Uh, but uh, I, I see it as a joint uh, responsibility, as a joint effort. And let's not forget, there are no borders in, cy in cyberspace. Our friends are at a click distance. Let me put it like that. And it shall be so easy to, to work together in order to, to move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate it. Liliana, calling from Belgium. Yes, thank you very much, Kenneth, and thank you very much for the invitation from the Atlantic Council and the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce. Um, I have been listening to uh, my predecessors in uh, this uh, magic panel, and uh, I was um, thinking to make some references to what Michelle said about the cyber toolbox on 5G and about the initiatives that the Commission are uh, taking uh, very seriously at real top level, together with the President. And um, <clears throat> this Commission came in 2019 with a very strong mandate, saying that digital and cybersecurity are two sides of the same coin, and therefore, for us, cybersecurity is top priority. And that is the first time in our history when we put something so technical, so vivid like cybersecurity in the center of our top political priorities. And that had an impact, a major impact on the way we have restructured the budget of the union for the next period. Therefore, cybersecurity has a place at the top table a participant into the discussion on funding. And that is the result of the creation of the, of the Cyber Center in Bucharest now. Because the Digital Euro program and the Horizon 2020 program that are financing this, uh, the creation of the center are coming on cybersecurity and trust with 2 billion euros, which is quite impressive. Uh, to support procurement and advanced equipment, tool and data infrastructure to ensure wide development of uh, solutions across the economy and to reinforce capabilities. And here is the collaboration part, because to reinforce capabilities, we cannot do it just at European level. We cannot consider ourselves isolated. Uh, this word, uh, as Dan said, cybersecurity has no border, is an invisible layer of our daily life and um, that's why the collaboration is not only at the institutional level is not only at the um, political level it has to go deeper down into the business relationship into the into the university exchange of people into the research uh, fellows that uh, are exchanged between the continents and uh, I know very well because I used to uh, work into um, the research executive agency of the Commission that we have a keen interest from Europe to have an exchange of researchers on all fields. And now cybersecurity is coming with the support for researchers. 
and therefore uh, the Christian and uh, and our bodies are very interesting into collaboration. Now, um, I have also a very keen interest on on, on skills, and cyber skills are um, really a, a field where we need a lot, a lot to work together. Why? Because um, we know very well that Romania is, as Dan said, the sixth country that is uh, having uh, capability and human resources on, um, on digital market. But we would like that these people are staying home, are not migrating. So um, the creation of the, of the Cyber Center is also bringing a potential of collaboration by locating those resources where they live. And with coronavirus, we have seen that majority of people prefer to work from their home countries, from their home places, rather than being commuted or uh, rather be relocated somewhere else. And this is showing a new trend in cybersecurity and is opening a potential for students and for researchers to continue to work and to study by still staying home. And um, for sure, one of the parts of the funding for the for the center will be related to uh, the creation of these hubs, of the national hubs that are going to sponsor all kind of initiatives related to cybersecurity that are going to um, create potential at the regional and national level. And here is the, the, the beauty of um, transatlantic partnership, because once it will be concluded and signed, and I know that my colleagues from uh, one of the director generals of the commission, the, the trade uh, director general was very keen last year when I had the cyber mentorship with them, and I explained to them what is the, the, the toolbox of 5G and how, how the threat uh, actors are working and what is the threat landscape and why the European Commission is also now targeted like a, like a nation state actor. They were very keen on continuing the discussions with partners across the um, ocean. And uh, they were um, very positive on, on having a new administration. And now listening to what uh, Mr. Biden said at the at Munich conference, we will be back. That gives a signal. And we have to capitalize on that signal because we have been waiting for this. And now we see what is happening around the world. We see that the East is not quite the East. Is not, there's no notion of where's the East, where's the South, where's the North, and where's the West in cybersecurity. There's no pole. And there we need to work together to be transparent and to have the right mechanisms. And this is what the Central will bring the right mechanisms to exchange information because in the end it's about information isn't it and to create new skills and on the skills because i have um, used to work with dan on uh, on a very important project called the uh, social security uh, exchange of information uh, on the skills is not just cyber because cyber is one domain but is linked to data privacy is linked to uh, a banking is linked to identity of people and this in europe is very important we we are uh, having um, a culture of um, preserving our rights of citizens no matter where we are working so uh, because of that uh, most probably the fact that the central is located in bucharest is showing that Bucharest has the capability to host it, has the capability to engage seriously uh, as a big capital in Europe with other partners. We are also having a double head with the um, US partnership. And therefore, Bucharest might become a pole of cybersecurity on this side of Europe. So, um, Thank you very much for inviting me and I'm uh, looking forward to hear the others. Thank you, Liliana. That was very inspirational. I'm so glad to hear it and super excited about everything you all are saying about uh, Romania. So Marco, are you on the line? I am, I am. Good afternoon, Kenneth. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it, it's really a pleasure to, uh, to uh, be here today uh, speaking to you. 
I would like to start by thanking the Council, the Atlantic Council and the Romanian US Chamber of Commerce for inviting me. I'm, uh, my name is Marco Lubacos Lorians. Uh, I'm the head of uh, uh, the Research and Innovation Program for ENISA. And ENISA is the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity and is a major actor in the European Union cybersecurity landscape. Uh, ENISA is one of the union uh, 40 plus agencies. Um, today we're discussing about uh, the Compton Center, the European Union Cybersecurity Industrial Technology and Research Compton Center and the network are also, or uh, will also become one of the major actors in the union cybersecurity landscape. The two organizations, ENISA and the Content Center, will create synergies across Europe in their work towards achieving a high common level of cybersecurity across the union. Um, you may ask, uh, what are the differences between ENISA and the Content Center? Well, it's basically in the mandate, uh, the landscape, uh, the, the European landscape for cybersecurity. Um, includes a number of entities that are supporting and contributing to this vision on making Europe more resilient to cyber threats. Uh, in ESA's mandate, as outlined in the, cyber, in the EU Cybersecurity Act, defines the agency's role in capacity building, cyber policy, development and implementation, market analysis and certification, and operational cooperation. The Compton Center um, role uh, will be mainly as an instrument, uh, union's instruments, to pull uh, financial, financial uh, related resources into the research and innovation of product and services and, tech and cybersecurity related technologies. So these are um, two entities that will complement in terms of their contribution into this vision. So in summary, ENISA will partner with this forthcoming European Cybersecurity Content Center to achieve a high common level of cybersecurity across the union. The aim of the center is at stimulating the research and development of new products and services through the financing of cybersecurity related projects. The Compton Center and the network of national coordination centers will provide an important contribution reducing the union's dependency uh, from non-European actors to protect its digital infrastructure. In addition to this, the center will also help Europe to compete for the global leadership in the cybersecurity market. In a nutshell, I, I, um, so far we discussed about the importance of cybersecurity uh, for Europe and, for, and globally, uh, but I would like just to um, just to uh, outline some important aspects related with uh, with this European initiative of setting up uh, this uh, competence center and network of national coordination centers. First of all, the publication of the Content center regulation is expected by May 21, uh, 2021. Um, as we all know, and uh, already uh, some of us already get congratulations to the government of Romania, um, that the center uh, will be based in Bucharest and will be governed by the member states and by the commission with a mandate uh, of nine years. And um, hopefully, and that's, that's the plan, is that uh, this uh, center will attract uh, around 4 billion euros uh, of public including through the Digital Europe Programme and Capacity Building and Horizon Europe for innovation actions and private investment in cybersecurity over the period of 2021-2027. But most importantly, um, most importantly, uh, the role of ENISA uh, in supporting the Competence Centre will be to, to be able to identify what are the key priorities in Europe in terms of researching and developing uh, innovative products and services that will help us securing our digital infrastructure on contributing to securing our critical services and also, as I mentioned, to be able for Europe to compete globally in the cybersecurity market. All these together, I believe it's, um, it's a very ambitious but a, a strong commitment from Europe in making sure that um, uh, we protect our citizens, we protect our economy, and we are able to, once uh, we're able to come out from this um, uh, state uh, that we're currently uh, going through with the pandemic, that we will become stronger with a stronger economy to be able to, uh, to support our citizens in making uh, the cyberspace uh, more reliable, available to everyone, uh, and playing by the rules set by the European Union. Um, last, this is my final contribution, and I hope to end that there will be questions and available to discuss. Thank you. 
Marco, thank you so much. I really appreciate everyone's comments uh, so far. I think it's a it's, uh, very exciting uh, place we are, I think, with new administration uh, in Washington um, and with uh, increased collaboration between NATO and the EU uh, on cybersecurity issues. Um, so the, the challenges are significant, uh, but honestly, I think that international collaboration, specifically in the form of, of NATO and EU countries working together on this issue, is stronger. Uh, even if you're sitting in back and it's a you're a, a bad actor in, in, a, uh, uh, in an adversary capital, I think the idea of 30 plus countries working together proactively, reactively, uh, and best practices in attribution, uh, it is incredible. It's astonishing. Uh, and, and I think that uh, the new EU center couldn't be better located. Uh, and so I have a couple of questions related to that, but I do want to ask um, our hosts at the Atlanta Council if there are questions in queue Right, because then I, I won't I won't ask a question if our uh, audience members have already sent in questions. So can can I put that question to the floor? That I am not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and throw out a question specifically to our Romanian experts. Uh, and ask what in particular, um, Romania is a country, what do you think would be uh, the key characteristics of uh, a contribution to international cybersecurity from Romania that no one else could provide, right? What, what, is, what is unique about Romania? Um, and I won't say anything more that specific than that, that you would like to share uh, with the group uh, about uh, Romania and its ability to contribute to uh, international cybersecurity. If you don't mind, I will take the challenge and uh, provide the response, a short one, with, you, with your Thank permission. Thank you. Um, I think uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a typical example. I, I'm a Romanian dude. I work in business all my entire career. Now I I try to contribute uh, to the governmental uh, effort to uh, to increase uh, and to improve cybersecurity and to do more. Um, actually, um, what we can bring to the table as a nation, as uh, as experts, uh, is really a, a very keen and genuine sense of innovation. So I think uh, many Romanian specialists, many Romanian uh, companies, many Romanian startups, they have a remarkable ability to adapt to new conditions, to move really very fast, to team up. We are by, by nature people that we like to collaborate. We like to build things. We like to work with others and offer an, an open hand to, to our business partners. So I think the level of determination of uh, commitment to move things forward and to think a bit out of the box, in particular for cybersecurity, that is a very brand new domain for all of us. Things, as I said a bit earlier, are moving really very fast and in a very complex manner. I think Romanian specialists, Romanian uh, governmental bodies, Romanian businesses, they will be perfect players, perfectly fit for this new context. So we'll, we'll be able to drive things fast, a bit in Romanian way with our uh, own uh, flavor, let me put it like that. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the way we want to make a change and to make impact. Fantastic. Thank you. Would anyone else like to, to say something on this score? If not, then, I, then I'll ask a little bit about uh, con the conflict space. Um, so I think the Black Sea uh, region, uh, Ukraine, uh, as well as in general, I think perhaps we, we should say human rights uh, in some countries, um, not so far from Romania, um, there have been challenges, uh, right, to, um, in terms of uh, 
electronic government, to digital society, uh, freedom of speech, uh, etc. Um, who in the group would like to comment on how how the new center might contribute, or Romania might contribute, or might provide expertise? Sometimes places like Minsk can seem far away from Washington, but they're not so far, right, from Romania. Uh, Budapest, Moscow, actually, they're in. They're much closer uh, to to Romania, and so I think that that some way we could uh, articulate today how how we might uh, how the EU uh, and the new EU center in Romania might contribute toward understanding uh, conflict in cyberspace uh, and how to make progress uh, internationally, not only outside the alliance, but inside to, to build uh, best practices, joint investigations, transparent reports, uh, things that we can do as an alliance to show the world how to do it. The floor is yours. Perhaps I'm not the best one to to take the the floor on this, but I can I can give an example because you mentioned uh, neighborhood countries and closed countries to us. So um, first of all, uh, Budapest is a part of the European Union, so we still <laughs> we still have a great collaboration with them. But uh, with uh, with Ukraine, for example, we have an open partnership. So um, there we have, and I'm, perhaps you already know, um, in every country we have delegations of the European Union. Um, and these delegations, like, like the one in Washington, like the one in New York, these delegations are kind of uh, our branches of policies and projects for cooperation. Um, in, in Ukraine, for example, we have a European partnership and uh, there is a huge budget for, for that. We use, uh, uh, we use uh, indirect management uh, mechanism, but the center can bring their specialists and can be uh, what I said before regarding the universities exchange. Uh, we already have, for example, in Romania, as I'm also Romanian, uh, we already have a lot of uh, students coming from Ukraine and studying in Romania at the, at the tech universities uh, and uh, have exchanges with them. Uh, many of them decide to continue to work in Romania. They even apply for Romanian um, citizenship, those that had... Um, um, parents, uh, grandparents, and they turn to open businesses. And here is the return on investment. So they come to study, they learn uh, the European procedures for applying for uh, grants, for opening uh, startups, and they return to their countries and they, they, they continue to expand the knowledge there. And this is one part, the, not the political part, but the ground part where we have to work with others. Um, and uh, we also have internship programs. And in these internship programs, we accept students from wherever the world. Uh, every single delegation of uh, the European Union is having uh, internship one, two, three posts. Uh, in in uh, US, uh, in Washington, there were 21 posts for internship. So students can apply for that, can learn, and then they can come back to their universities where they can become fellow uh, teachers or fellow uh, con uh, lecturers, and they can explain to the others how to work in uh, European mm. partnership in cybersecurity. This is one, uh, one important element that we have to think not only at the top level of uh, strategic and political, but we have also to think at operational level, how the center will operate with the national hubs how the information will be exchanged between one and another. Thank you. 
Thank you. We have some questions. I want to read them quickly uh, and then give you the opportunity to answer them. Uh, so first question is, is there a specific US EU mechanism uh, to coordinate cybersecurity policy and resources? Some of these Michelle may know actually uh, easily, uh, but I do want to read a couple of questions and just see uh, so we might group them together. Uh, second question, what kind of support and collaboration would be useful and appropriate for major online technology providers? And I'll just read one more. Here's from the Marshall Center in Garmisch Partenkirchen. Uh, what extra incentives can the government of Romania offer European and transatlantic partners to relocate to Bucharest to better partner with the new center? So I'll ask those three, and if nobody answers, I'll ask some more. Uh, if I may, I can't. Uh... I also read the, the questions and that question, what about, what extra? The question from Garmisch Partenkirchen. Uh, it's a very interesting question. I, I really don't know the answer, but uh, I will find out if there are any facilities offered by the Romanian government to relocate the companies, because it's very, very interesting. I must admit I'm new in this uh, position and uh, but I find it very interesting. I don't know if I can answer that, but I will speak with the um, with Duncan Pano if we can offer you a, a a proper answer for this question. And I also find another question very very interesting, and I think that Marco can answer that. Uh, the new center can standardize something. So if it's possible to have the the questions after the, this Zoom meeting, to have it on in a written way somehow because uh, I will try to give you some answer at the question put from Philip Lark from Garmisch. Thank you. So we do have a question that perhaps our Romanian colleagues can answer. It's asking about uh, 5G um, and uh, it says the process seems to be inexcusably delayed more than 18 months. The lack of legislation is affecting 5G public procurement, affecting businesses and raising the risk for digital exclusion uh, within the region. Uh, so I'm not sure if uh, someone in our group can answer on 5G. Um, with your permission, uh, I will pick it up. I would know uh, my head of uh, co-chair of the um, intergovernmental group for 5g security as you may be aware um, over the summer and in september october the group uh, intergovernmental group uh, did a bit of work uh, first of all it was to provide to the european union the 5g report of romania where we stand and what are the key uh, strategic technical and non-technical measures according to the 5g toolbox then uh, a piece of uh, law uh, a legislative act was drafted in order to address the main risk identified by European Union and by Romania as well, which was the risk of uh, having one uh, technology provider in this entire supply chain being controlled by a foreign hostile government, as you may know. Um, so a draft law was uh, prepared, it was uh, open for public debate. It's uh, public and published, and it was uh, the proper conversation and dialogue around this law. Uh, of course, at this moment, um, uh, we are all looking into into the matter in order to uh, move on and have progress with this piece. As I said, it's an intergovernmental effort. It's not only one uh, governmental body or another. Uh, uh, there is obvious uh, concern for all of us. Uh, the, let me put it like that. The need to speed up the rollout of the 5G. but. Uh, and now I put back my uh, said Romania hat, uh, general director, uh, it shall not go on at any cost. So not at the cost of uh, creating, uh, creating uh, let me put it like that, unacceptable cybersecurity risks amongst others. Uh, so I'm positive that uh, we'll move on uh, quite fast on this and we all have uh, large expectations from the 5G technology and we are all hoping to be able to use it hands-on and uh, handle it and build upon it and uh, increase the business uh, around this. 
Uh, of course, my job uh, is to worry about this. Uh, other colleagues from governmental bodies with competences on this domain, they are looking into it as well, but I'm comfortable and uh, convinced that uh, Romania will speed up uh, and uh, uh, roll it out uh, like other countries in European Union quite fast. Thank you so much for those questions. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm going to have to, given our time, uh, turn to the concluding remarks. Uh, we have Alex from the Atlantic Council. Uh, Alex, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. OK. Uh, so thank you very much to the participants for this very uh, substantial discussion and question and answers. Uh, uh, linking Washington and Bucharest and the United States and Europe in a uh, cyber dialogue. Uh, Romania's efforts in cybersecurity span at least two decades across many institutions, as you've seen today, government, uh, SRI, MOD, CERT, Dash Ro, but also the Romanian MFA and the Ministry of Transport and Telecom that was responsible for Romania's candidacy and bringing to Central Europe and the Black Sea region the European Cybersecurity Center. Uh, it confirms not only the EU's commitment to this field as policy and a political priority, but also Romania's excellent position for the tasks ahead. Uh, the European Cybersecurity Center will boost research and innovation across the EU and generate investments and flow of expertise in the transatlantic area. It will speed up plans towards digital transformation and transition and facilitate the wide deployment of digital technologies. All of these issues are at the top of the agenda of Romania and Central European countries. Romania will play a significant role in shaping the future of a digital Europe by contributing to main issues at stake, such as privacy, data protection, digital and tech sovereignty, and ultimately to Europe's position in a digital and global world. In light of the strategic partnership between Romania and the US, and in the context of the Three Cs initiative, as well as Romania's position in NATO, through the center, Romania can contribute as and act as a broker of trust in transatlantic relations and towards shaping a digital future centered around European and Western values. Security and cybersecurity are at the core of these shared values and will contribute to a revision of transatlantic cooperation against global threats. On behalf of the Atlantic Council in Bucharest, and uh, together with our partners at the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce in Washington and all over the US, thank you very much. And we hope to continue this process and this dialogue in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, can we turn to Doran uh, of the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce to close us out? Well, thank you, Ken. Uh, what a wonderful conversation and congratulations to all participants. Um, uh, on behalf of the Romanian Chamber of Commerce, uh, we are grateful to all panelists, audience, and the uh, Atlantic Council and CERT row teams that made this conversation possible today. This was another celebration of the 10 year anniversary of the US Romania strategic partnership and of Atlanticism. We hope you learned something new today and you had a better understanding of the opportunities and challenges for the next chapter of transatlantic cybersecurity collaboration. As you very well know, cybersecurity is a team sport, and therefore we all have to work together to safeguard our civilization. I'm confident that today's conversation was the first step of many to come. In this light, the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce in Washington, DC has formed the Cybersecurity Task Force aimed at contributing to the cyber cooperation and digital trade between the United States and Romania and European Union more broadly. We are growing our community of all things cyber. So if you already have, or you're thinking of any cyber related projects or opportunities in the United States or Romania, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. If you know of any individuals or organizations who may be interested in what we're doing, we would welcome and much appreciate these introductions. You can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or also via our website. This being said, until next time, I wish everyone a wonderful rest of the day and thanks for joining us. Thanks to all.